Hey everybody, it's Gypsy here um, from the Bitchy Witches, one of the three. And today I wanted to proceed with part two of ancestral work. But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on our Instagram, our Facebook. Um, don't forget we have a Patreon and a buy me a coffee if you feel you can't um, contribute a monthly donation. If you can go on to um, buy me a coffee and donate a couple bucks here and there if you feel like you love us that much and then that way that helps us keep rolling and able to bring you more content and more podcasts all the time. So let's get started. This is part of our Samhain um, October series and this is going to be part two to my ancestral work. So part two is discussing building your practice. You know, you did your family tree, you've already figured out, you know, your heritage, where you've come from, where your family lies, and everything, right? All right, what do you do with that information? That's a good question. So you take the heritage, heritage that you have found, or the multiple ones, because many, or most of us, all of us, pretty much, um, here in the United States, um, and all around the world, actually, we all come from multiple heritages. We are not one street heritage, most of us. So what do you do? You go and start researching each one's different, um, you know, systems of of old traditions and everything you know so you would sit there and you know we're gonna use my stuff for an example because I don't know what everybody else is so that that pertains to you so you know with that being said you know my Norse my Celtic all that um, get up on the computer look for books and resources that clearly help you to find things like that Yes, you're going to come across pagan stuff because most people prior to Christianity were considered pagans and most of them have a lot of different traditions in each thing. So say, you know, there was different branches of Norse, so you look up those different traditions, um, their practices, what they were all about, um, Celtic. Um, you've got Celtic, you've got Dru Druids, you've got those. Look up those. <clears throat> Decide what from that practice is relevant and just resonates with you, right? Um, you can also, if you grew up with specific traditions, like for me, example, I didn't even realize growing up my great-grandmother was doing little witchy things. I thought she was just superstitious. And a crazy old woman, you know. So I didn't realize that until I got older and look, started looking more into Appalachian magic and conjuring. Her family is from the Appalachian area. So they practiced the co Appalachian conjuring and magic. So every little thing she did while I was growing up resonates with me. And the more I learned, the more I was like, she was teaching and passing down something to me from her heritage, which is mine, which was amazing. So, what do we do with that? Once you start getting into, you know, different traditions, different practices, start a notebook. Start a notebook. Write down the traditions and the practices in those heritages that you've looked up and traditions you've looked up and start going through the ones that really mean something to you what really fits in your practice because you know some people specifically and only work with their ancestrals as ancestrals ancestors as their guides they don't, they're, they're, people have spirit guides. Most of them actually only work with their ancestrals as spirit guides. Me, myself, pretty much that's how I roll. 
a lot of times because I trust them. I trust their knowledge. I trust their powers. I trust their guidance because they were there before me. They laid the foundation prior to my birth. I carry on their legacy, their bloodline from thousands of years ago till now. We each carry that inside ourselves. <clears throat> so just think about it. We are carrying that on. Why not work with it? Why not work with what's in your DNA? So what of those practices interest you? Do you want to use them in your spell work? Do you want to sit there and use them as counsel? There's different ways to honor them. You know, once you figure out those traditions, figure out what, how they used to honor their ancestors or honor, you know, the, the bloodline, the heritage. There's some that have specific rituals. There's some that do altars. There's some that just keep a little offering plate. There's some that make a every week or every month pil pilgrimage to the cemeteries to clean, decorate, protect, and all that of their loved ones' grave sites. Also with that, if you do choose to work with them, you can use the grave dirt from each uh, person's grave in your family. It really doesn't matter. Like I know I have a few assholes in my family, but when I'm doing something that requires that anger, that attitude, I'll use the dirt from them because it's that power of them that that gun ho um, attitude that they used to possess, you know? So, I mean, there's absolutely no right or wrong to this because you're picking and choosing what to use from your heritage in your practice. That's how you build your own practice. What feels right to you? What of your ancestors just calls to you to do and use from their practices you know it's a beautiful thing when you build your practice around your heritage and your ancestors and how can i say this it kind of gives you that noble pride to use it so sit down take a minute as soon as you're done with that tree and you've figured out who you are hit the books it's not hard. It really isn't. The thing is, the thing that's going to be hard is for you to decide what is right for yourself because you're going to have many people telling you, this isn't right. You shouldn't do that. Sorry, that's not how it works. Your practice is your practice. Their practice is theirs. They may not even understand ancestral workings yet. They might, might not be in that place or in that level to accept and be ready to go down that rabbit hole of ancestral work because it can get deep it can get really deep for some people and i mean deep is great deep is amazing deep starts healing those past wounds of yourself and your family so with that being said uh, here's a book i would like to share with you guys it's an awesome guide okay it's honoring your ancestors um a guide to ancestral um venerations this book actually goes through hundreds of years of different ways of honoring and communicating and you know just connecting with your ancestors um it's not specific on your heritage it's just different ways that people around the world in different cultures used to honor and um, you know celebrate just celebrate and work with their ancestors so I'm gonna totally recommend this book because it, it's great it breaks it down um, what do you call it there's different aspects of religion points and viewpoints because it's not just a witchcraft book or a pagan book. It goes through all cultures because one form or another, each culture and religion do honor their ancestors. So I will make sure to put this link, the book link 
in the description for you guys if you're interested in it to add to your book collection. But that, that book is going to be a great way to take all this information that you have gathered about your ancestors' practices and beliefs and using different ways to tailor to your practice. So, once you're done with building your tree and finding out who you are, start building your practice. And that is not hard. So, I absolutely hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to stick around because one more, one more. So there's three to this episode or this series. So this was part two. Keep an eye out for part three. Don't forget to keep an eye out for Miss Bella Luna's next videos and podcast um, episodes. And after my series is over, I will be telling you all about and explaining a dumb supper for you. So don't forget, like this this video, subscribe to us, and keep in touch. Peace out, guys.